So, hi everybody. Um, I'm William Molinari, and, and I'll talk about the open source behind the web requests. Um, first thing is, I'm Brazilian, uh, so I'm not a native English speaker, and you know, we tend to destroy everyone's games on the internet, so <laughs> that's it. We have a lot of Brazilian here, by the way, so we, we would conquer the world sometime. Uh, and I have uh, 100 plus slides, and I have just 30 minutes to say everything, so that would be fast. Yeah, I, I tend to speak fast, so uh, sit tight. And let's go have some water here, and I'll need it. Um, so I'm William Molinari. I'm also known by this weird nickname called Potex. Uh, yeah, that, that's something from Diablo 2 and some 10 years ago. Um, and I work for Local Web, so thanks Local Web for having me here. They are paying the expenses from Brazil to um, Brussels. Um, I'm also the main organizer for Sao Paulo Rub Users Group uh, in Brazil. It's the biggest Rub user group in Brazil with meetings. Uh, it's a kind of cool thing. And uh, I tend to do, to do uh, HTML5 game development in my spare time just for fun. So if you can check it out if you want to. Uh, that's it about me. Uh, let's go to the motivation about this presentation. Uh, and the main motivation is that I wrote a book about that uh, in Brazilian Portuguese. So yeah, no, it might not be so useful for you. But uh, I tend to translate. I, I want to translate that to English in the future. So just tell me if you, want to, that, uh, if you think that is a good idea. Uh, but the book is about um, what happens in a web request, a lot of things that are happening from the operating system and networking and, I don't know, uh, server frameworks and uh, some kind of that, that kind of things. And uh, so I focus on the desktop part and not going to so deep on um, server side. Uh, but that's it. So uh, let's start with our user. Um, I'm a big fan of JRR Tolkien. I, yeah, I'm using some t-shirt of Gondor. But, uh, and I'm using a lot of the, his character for that. So let's imagine Gandalf as a user, and he's trying to access my personal blog. I don't know why. But he's trying to do that. So the first thing that will happen, we'll use uh, a browser, of course. Uh, and we'll use Chromium in this case. So it's uh, the first open source software here. Uh, and the first thing is to type a new URL there. Um, and the first question that Chrome will ask is, uh, is it really a new URL? And it may look silly, right? But uh, well, why we will not uh, ask a type a new URL in the address bar? And uh, you know that you can type wherever you want in the address bar, and you just search on a search engine for you. In this case, uh, we use um, it will use Google to search for this way we br br, you know. Uh, so, but we will assume that that's a new URL, and we can continue to the next question. That is. Is it in the AS, HSTS list? And by HSTS, I mean strict transport security. That uh, Chromium has a hard-coded version of a list of uh, a list of websites that can be accessed uh, via HTTPS. Uh, uh, firstly, so it will uh, ask that if the your URL is present on this list, uh, and every bro every server can send a strict transport security header, so it will be included there. If it's dynamic. Uh, so there, there's a, a lot of links here. So it's a link for, for Chrome if you want to look to it. Uh, in this case, we'll continue with HTTP for a while. Uh, the next question is, uh, does we have uh, cache about that? And we will assume in this presentation that there's no cache anywhere because it will be so easy, right? Just uh, return the cache and thank you. But so we'll, we'll continue without caching. Uh, so in this case, there's no caching. So browser, just continue. Uh, caching can be done via expires or cache control or e tag a lot of uh, uh, HTTP headers here. Um, so that, that there's no cache, we can continue. And browser will split the URL into three different parts, protocol, domain, and path. We have to continue through domain because the internet does, doesn't know what, what is potix.com is really mean, right? That we have to use IP addresses and this kind of thing. So we have to get the IP address for potix.com. Um, so uh, it will check if we have a DNS caching for that. So Chromium has its own version of imp or own implementation of DNS. You can check into um, of architecture of open source applications book. There's a chapter about that. So Chromium has its own implementation of DNS, so it can uh, go faster. Uh, but we will not continue with that. We will use get eddr info. That there are two main implementations with uh, uh, internal implementation and get eddr info using the operating system. So we will use uh, get eddr info so we can get into the operating system right now. Um, so by operating system, I mean POSIX and glibc, right? That's GNU libc. Um, so glibc will look to the, your etc hosts. Uh, so may, you may have defined your, uh, uh, just like a DNS in an etc host. So you have this domain points to a different IP address. So it will not go to the, uh, the 
uh, real DNS, so it will just use your ETC host. There's a, a link for the implementation if you want to look to it. Um, so that's get ADDR info, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, to deep dive on the code because, you know, it's boring. Uh, I should have that on the presentation. Um, so what get, get, get ADDR info will do is to, uh, f firstly, is search on a, uh, ask, uh, name the server's caching daemon. Uh, so in case you have, uh, 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 this is another layer of caching, so you may have a cache for your the domain resolution, so it will ask to name server caching daemon. Obviously, we, we are not using cache in this case as well. So that, that, the big picture is we have a, a user. We are getting to the operating system to live to the internet, right? But to live to the internet, we will have to go a little further to the, a little bit of theory to Aussie model. And I, I don't know about you, but every time I talk about the Aussie model, I get one of those caps in my head because it's, it's so academic, right? It's so boring to, to talk about that. Uh, so let, let's start, try to simplify this a little bit to, to not be so boring. Uh, let's remove those two uh, layers there and we use just five layers here. Um, so we can uh, split that into the operating system and the user oh, and the user part. So we have application for the user and those other two four layers for the operating system. Um, so we can, now you can see that as protocols uh, and we will look through each of those protocols uh, one by one. So let's get started with DNS. Uh, as I said, just, just a parenthesis here, Chrome has its own implementation of DNS, you can check it out if you want. This is the link for the Chrome source code. Um, and uh, getting back to the get ADDR info, uh, we have two syscalls here, uh, a call for socket and a call for connect, that, that's the source code. Uh, so we are using uh, UDP IP, socket dgram from UDP and IP protocol from IP. We are using UDP IP and just attributing an IP address via connect. So the, the connect will just get this IP address and attribute to the, the socket. Um, so we can check that with uh, Strace if you want. Uh, don't worry about the, this whole code. Uh, Chromium has a lot of processes, process for rendering, for tabs, for extensions, for, for uh, a lot of things. So I'm just getting the, uh, the PI, all the PIDs there. Uh, let, let's focus on this trace there. So we have minus F to get all the threads and uh, we're just uh, using some syscalls there that socket connect. So what do we have here? We have a socket for IPv6 with UDP IP. So we are trying uh, UDP IP version, uh, trying to get an UDP IP, Tr trying to get the IP via IPv6, sorry. Uh, so we are trying to do a connect and I don't have IPv6 configured uh, in this laptop, so network is unreachable. So it tries IPv4, PF, IPnet with UDP IP to get the DNS. Just, just uh, we can see that uh, we have here uh, IPv6 for Google DNS and IPv6 for uh, Google domain resolution and from IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, so we get UDP IP and we get the IP from my personal blog and so the, it, we get the, the, the data that we want. So, but why, why he's trying IPv4 and IPv6? I didn't ask it for that. And the reason is that we have this algorithm called happy eyeballs working uh, behind the scenes. And we have a, the RFC for, for you. Like, who, who don't wants to read an RFC on this Sunday, right? Uh, it's so, so cool. So uh, that's it if you want to read it. But what happy eyeballs does is just uh, request both uh, entries in the, the, the DNS. So we have A and four A's, IPv4 and IPv6. And so you can request, uh, do a request for both application, IPv4 and IPv6. And you just use IPv4 in case IPv6 is not working or just use IPv6 if it's working. And why we, we need that? We, we are still using that, but we, we don't know. Uh, it's because we are trying to transition from IPv4 to IPv6, right? And it's, uh, not all IPv6 connections are fully working. So we are doing that to use it when it's available. So we are not penalizing our user because of that. So that's it, Happy Eyeballs is helping us. Curl implements that, Firefox, Chromium, a lot of the, the new Macs implement that, iOS. So that's it, it's working. Uh, so let's get to the UDP IP in this case. We are in the DNS yet. We, we are not to the HTTP yet. Um, so UDP is implemented inside the Linux kernel. So this is the operating system, right? UDP is implemented inside the Linux kernel. I'm not a kernel hacker, so I, I, I'm not sure if the, what, what is happening there, but this is the first um, file that you, you can look if you want to, to understand some things. And what, what is uh, happening with UDP is that uh, we just uh, attribute an IP address and send it to the internet and you will not uh, 
Right? You, you don't know if you will receive a response and a confirmation about that. So that's UDP. We will get to TCP soon. Um, so that's it. We can finally go to the link, the physical layer, but let's let's let it for uh, some some time from 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 here uh, soon. So the DNS, uh, we are, I did this with DNS tracer. So what what's happening with DNS here with domain resolution? We are this user. We will ask our recursive name server. In this case, is in my case, it's my personal router at home. Um, so there's no cache. That, remember that there's no cache. It will ask one of those two those uh, 13 root servers that will send us the IP for one of the for one of those two top level domain servers in my case potex.com is the top level domain for .com that I will get my um, authoritative server and I finally get my IP address that is the 192 up there so that's it we finally got what we were we were looking for that is my IP address and we finally can get to the HTTP that is what we were looking for so let's get started from from scratch so we have TCP IP with HTTP now. And let's get started with TCP first because it will be uh, better to explain. So, uh, yeah, TCP is implemented inside the Linux kernel. So, uh, if you can, you can look to the TCP C if you want to. Uh, and TCP is really different than UDP, right? You have uh, a lot of control and statuses, and uh, yeah, we have a connection here, not just a send, sending a text. But we will not go into, the, into detail of that because it's, it's boring, right? Uh, so uh, let's look to the three-way handshake uh, and how we establish a connection. So we use Gandalf again for this case. Uh, what's happening here is that we have a server listening on the other side, on port 80, for example. Let, let's my, uh, my blog is running port 80. Um, so uh, Gandalf, in this case, is the operating system. We will send a sync a sync package to that to to to, to the server. This is the first step. So it tries to connect to the server, and the server says, "Nice." I, I was expecting a connection. I want to connect it to you as well. So it sends an act to confirmation, uh, as a confirmation, and send to the other side. So this is the second step. And as a third step, it just confirms. So we have a connection from Gandalf to the server and from server to Gandalf. So it's a, it's a full established connection. And we have Gandalf happy, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so let's, now that we have a connection, we can go to HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, we'll start with HTTPS because we have to have an encrypted, encrypted connection here. So uh, HTTPS is just HTTP over TLS. So we have an encryption tunnel uh, between quotes here. So uh, it's just like that, just like uh, between HTTP and TCP IP. Uh, so uh, it's based on the, this article. It's a dense article if you want to read it. Uh, okay, let's imagine that we already have a connection here. You, you can remember that's Gandalf happy. Uh, so uh, the first thing to do is to send a list of ciphers and a URL from client to server. And by a list of ciphers, I mean the thing. Uh, you can check your, your ciphers if you, can, if you go to this website. But uh, there's a lot of encryption algorithms and key exchange algorithms. And yeah, that's it. A lot of things that we are not going deep in deep detail here. Uh, so. The server will pick one of those ciphers and, and send back with the certificate. So in this case, we are using TLS, RCA with RC4, and yeah, that's it. Uh, and what we can uh, uh, remove from that is that um, uh, we'll use RSA for asymmetric cryptography, RC4 for symmetric cryptography, and MD5 for hashing. So we use a public key and private key here to exchange on the the key, a symmetric cryptography, we use this key to, to change information, to exchange information, and we will use hashing just to, to uh, compare packages and see if everything is okay. Uh, so that's it, just, just a second. That awkward moment. Okay, so uh, we will check the certificate uh, because certificate is solving a trust problem, right? Uh, we, uh, we, we don't know if this guy is potex.com for sure. So we are asking a third party uh, guy if he is really potex.com and the, the certificate solves this problem. We will just check the sign of the certification with one of those public keys that we have on our uh, uh, my laptop, for example. And if we sign and the sign is the same as the, the third party that's signing with the private key, we, have, we, we can be sure that this guy is really potex.com in case we trust on a third party there. That may be, I don't know, uh, verify or let's encrypt and I don't know. 
So we, we will check if we have a trustworthy C, CA uh, certificate authority. We will, we, we will look for a valid date in case the certificate is not expired. Um, expected URL, and we will have to check if the certificate is, is still valid. So we will have those, those checks. Um, and so we can do a master key exchange. And there's a complicated process going on here. I'm not going into detail, but there's a random number going from one, one side to another, and a lot of, uh, I don't know, cryptography. Those algorithms will uh, go in action here, so we are not going so, so deep here. So, but there, there's a big key on both sides. That they are generated on a secure way. Um, so finally, they have a, a, a trustworthy connection here. And it will use. Uh, RC4 as symmetric cryptography, just like your, I don't know, I don't know if this is a, a good explanation, but just like your Wi-Fi, you have a big key and they use symmetric uh, cryptography for that. And MD5 for content verifying, so every package will be verified with MD5 in this case, right? In this cipher that we chose. So that's it. Now we finally have TCP as a connection and uh, TLS as a encryption connection as well. So we can use HTTP or HTTP2. Uh, HTTP2 is the best one, I think. Uh, I would recommend you to use HTTP2. HTTP it's really, really cool and it's the future. But we use HTTP just to, just to as an example because it's plain text and it's easy to, uh, to show there. Uh, that there's a link for the Chrome implementation for uh, HTTP and HTTP2 that's called Speedy on Chromium code if you want to look <laughs> at it. Uh, okay, so this is HTTP. That there's no rocket science here, right? It's just a... a get here and with the file that we want and the protocol number and name and number. And we are using host here just to, because I'm using GitHub page for this case, they have, may, have be, may have a load balancer and you have to, to use that. But that's it, there's no rocket science, that's, that's HTTP. Uh, and so we finally have that and we go out for, to the internet, so we use internet or Wi-Fi and they have the physical layer. I'm just, uh, that, that's not exactly like that, but we'll have those two layers down there. Uh, so it's based on a paper, so that's it. But let's go inside the, uh, inside the Linux kernel, between quotes. Uh, so we have a socket library there, just like glibc, for example, that will talk to the TCP IP stack inside Linux kernel, that will talk to the uh, frameworks and drivers developed there, so we can finally go to the hardware to leave the, the operating system, uh, the, the machine by the way. Uh, so th this is the paper uh, I talked about uh, the last slide, so if you want, you can read it if you want. Uh, so we, we are going to kernel on uh, IPv4, uh, TCPC. There are some uh, uh, frameworks to develop device drivers for uh, wireless and net. And we have uh, IDWL Wi-Fi that is the driver for this, uh, net, this laptop. Uh, and the only part that is not open source here is the firmware uh, on my, the, the Intel firmware, so that's it, it's a blob. Uh, so everything else is, is open source. So we are finally leaving the operating system and we will go to our router to the internet. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, uh, the router because I will, have, I will not have enough time for that. But let's go to the internet, and by internet I mean just a, uh, a trace route because you know there's a lot of devices out there and we can't uh, study that. So let, let's imagine a trace route with TCP because uh, we lost a lot of a lot of packages if you use UDP here. Uh, so that's it. We are, I'm going to my router that is Palantir. Yeah, you know it's another thing from Lord of the Ring. Yeah. So we're going to Virtua that is Brazilian ISP. We're going to the backbone that go to New York City probably NYK. Uh, it's going to USA Backbone and GitHub page in this case. That's my personal blog. So that's it. Let's imagine that's the internet, right? Just like IT Crowd, just the, that little box. <laughs> yeah, that's the internet. Um, so uh, I'm not focusing on uh, this part, that the server part, because uh, we are in the desktop that room. So I, I removed a lot of slides here. I was studying uh, framework, studying uh, a lot of things here. So I just removed that. So let's imagine Nginx. Nginx may have a, a configuration for, for um, Unix sockets and for TCP. So in this case, it's for TCP, and this case is for Unix sockets. So you can check the documentation. Um, and we imagine that Nginx is talking to a, a web, web, application, web application server. So we are talking via, via TCP to this application server. 
Uh, we can do the TCP or Unix socket in this case. We just chose TCP because of because of reason, right? <laughs> so we'll just use that. So Unicorn will talk to Rack, that will talk to Rails. In this case, it's just a Rails setup, right? Uh, we don't have to be familiar with Rails, but what Rack does is just to make the protocol between uh, Unicorn and the Rails app. So you can change your framework to Sinatra, I don't know, and your uh, Unicorn to, I don't know, Puma, and, and they keep the same protocol there. So this is why Rack exists in this case. Uh, another good question here is that, why I have to put a web server on, uh, instead of just using Unicorn, a web application server, to the internet. And the reason is that Unicorn is well prepared for that. The, uh, uh, Nginx is well prepared for that. Unicorn is just implementing HTTP, but it's not so, I don't know, it's not a good guy to be on the internet. Because, you know, internet is difficult. We have a lot of Brazilians there. Uh, so what Rails will receive here is just a Ruby hash. Uh, with a lot of things here, uh, we have CGI 1.1 there, we have, uh, I don't know, this is uh, what that's of localhost, so I was testing here. Uh, HTTP 1.1, WebRig, that's the web server, application server, um, that's it. So we have a lot of things here. And Rails will receive that, and we'll try to understand what you want with this URL, so we try to understand what is a controller and what is a model, what is a controller and what is a view. Um, so that's it. Let, let's imagine the MVC here. I would change a little bit just to get the routes controller. So I will get some data from model, build a view, and we'll have an HTML here. So this is my personal blog finally. So you can finally get all the way back, all the way back until combo break, until we, we get to the user. So we will not get to the user right now because it's just plain text, right? We, we, we don't want to show plain text to our user. I don't want to, I don't know, understand HTML for that. So that's it. That, that's that's the, that time when you have a spinner there in your browser. It's just receiving a lot of information that is HTML. Uh, and it will try, it will have to parse that and build the web page. So. Here is uh, where the CS algorithms that we are learning the, the university comes to, to, li to life, right? Because we have to build the DOM tree, uh, that's document object model tree, so based on a lot of text there. Uh, and so th there's a link for uh, the implementation for inside Chromium and inside Blink, that is the rendering engine for Chrome. Uh, so that's it, Chrome will receive your HTML and fix a lot of errors for you. So I don't know about you, but I never saw a HTML syntax error. You can't see your Facebook comments because there is a HTML syntax error. That, that does not exist, right? Uh, and that does not exist because browser is doing a lot of magic for you. So that's it. Thanks, browser. Uh, we had more black magic, more, more black magic in the past when we have IE6, you know. Uh, it's more, more magic than we wanted. Just like Gandalf in The Hobbit and a lot of the, yeah, okay. Uh, so we have a lot of tags here. So we are receiving images and scripts and CSS and this kind of thing. So uh, brother, we start downloading that. Uh, every image and every link will be downloaded in a different thread. Uh, I, by thread, I mean asynchronously. So that's being downloaded asynchronously. Uh, and every time it finds a JS file, it will be downloaded synchronously. So it will block your whole rendering and download the file, execute it, and so it will continue. So that, that's, that's why uh, you have to put your JS file at the end of the, the page. So that's the reason. And just remember that every one of those guys is a Gandalf happy thing. Yeah. So you will have a lot of, uh, I don't know, three-way handshake and TLF thing. I know that that's keep alive to, 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 save the, to save the day, but uh, in theory, you have a lot of things going on here. Uh, so that's it. Uh, and by using HTTP2, you will uh, just use one connection and multiplexing through this connection. So use HTTP2 is the future. Uh, so we have to do the same thing with CSS. So we have the DOM tree and the CSS on tree. So we have uh, we have to do the same thing. There's not just text. We have to create this this tree, and so we have th this bo those three those those two trees, and we have to merge them. So when we merge this, those two trees, we have the render tree, and based on the render tree, we can finally uh, build the whole uh, application website in this case. So there, there's a good article about that. That's a master thesis, I think. So just read it if you want. Uh, and that's really interesting. So you you will find a a render tree, and this render tree will have uh, X and Y, so you have to drown this box with uh, X100 and Y100, so your browser will keep printing that uh, on your display. Uh, so 
finally, we finally have Gandalf in this case. We finally have my personal blog, so I can read so about Go and Ruby. I don't know. Uh, so that's it. And uh, uh, as a summary, uh, is that open source part of the web? We have a lot of open source, source oh, a lot of open source software out there, and that's why we have a not not that's why, but it's part in the web. It's really cool. And yeah, that's it. It's really easy, right? <laughs> Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and it helped you to understand what's happening on a web request through open source software. And I'll be waiting for a question if we have time for that. And thank you. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs>